In this video, we'll begin our discussion of finding extrema giving a surface or variables of, uh, or functions of more variables. Um, back in one variable, and I have a picture down here, in calc one, um, <clears throat> we would have a peak in our curve, and it'd be a, a relative max, meaning just in some neighborhood. And typically how I think about this is I think about if you do that and look in some kind of scope, it looks like the highest point of that function. Well, that is an absolute uh, relative maximum. <clears throat> From Calc 1, if you remember what we have, is that if I find the first derivative and set it equal to zero, those points are called critical points, and they can be a couple things. <clears throat> right? Those critical points couldn't find a maximum or minimum, relative or absolute, either one. It could be one of those. Or it could find inflection points. Now, inflection points were when the concavity changes. Um, and then another type of critical point that we're looking for is also when the derivative doesn't exist. In three space, it won't be much different. Instead, though, if we look at our picture down below, we don't just have a line. We have a whole plane that is zero. Now, checking that whole plane that would be zero would be pretty difficult. I'd have to find a bunch of tangent lines infinitely to get that whole plane. So instead, what we focus on is we look for critical points by finding our partials in x and y. So it would be like a flat plane running in each direction, x and y. If we could set those to zero and find what makes those zero, those are critical points now. Now, we have a couple different things that those can be. It could be an undefined value, right? I mean, it just doesn't exist. Or we have something we call what we call a saddle point. A saddle point um, is exactly what it sounds like. It looks like a saddle. Um, a picture of a saddle point. Let me snag one real quick here. A saddle is going to look like this. I'm just taking a screenshot real quick so I can get something. Oops, I'm on the wrong device. Give me one sec. Uh, let's delete screenshot. Let's get over to this device. All right. Let me give you what a saddle point would look like here. All right. I'll just put it on the screen and then I'll delete it. That is a saddle point right there in the middle. Um, it's kind of a weird point. Uh, it looks like a saddle, right? It looks like you could sit on there. Um, at that point, in this way, we have... Looks like it's a minimum, but if I look at this way, it looks like a maximum. So it's neither. It's just called a saddle point. We get, we get this weird relationship of in one direction, everything's go opening up, and in the other direction, everything is opening down. Um, we The good thing about, and what I do like about this test, the critical points will be the more difficult part, and then we are actually going to use a test just like there was a second derivative test, we actually have a second partial test to help us find um, and determine, or really to determine if these critical points are nothing, right? An undefined point, or if it's a, a relative max or min or saddle point, all right? So a couple of things before we move on. Critical points happen, and we're, gonna, we're about to see a bunch of examples of these, is when the first derivatives, the first partials are zero. So we have to find that, they also happen where they are undefined on the domain, and those relative extremely are found at those critical points. So we can find all extrema at those critical points. Here is the second, it says derivative test. I want you to go ahead and replace that. I just retyped it. This is second partials test. So in your notes, it should be fine. I just retyped it just a second ago and forgot to update mine. So a second partials test. Notice it's a bunch of partial derivatives. Um, this is called, there's another name for it, it's the Hessian. Um, I did a lot of grad school, all this kind of thing, and I didn't learn about that term until I started teaching at TCC. So I even taught bef after grad school before I even learned that name. I will not ask you to use it. Um, our book just refers to it as this capital D here. Now, there's two lines. What they did is, remember, if these two things, if the partials are continuous, then those two things are equal. So in the next line, all they did is they did minus, and they wrote down one of them and squared it. Okay, this is how we use this thing. If we have the first two, if they're e greater than zero, so if we do that and it's positive, then it's either going to be a relative max or a min, right? And this is based on our second derivative of x. All right, our second derivative of x, if it's positive, 
Remember, second derivative typically has to do um, with the curvature, right? So if it's opening up like that, if it's positive, that means it is a minimum, right? If the partial of x is opening down, if it's a negative curved concave, I keep saying curvature, but conca concavity, uh, if it's a negative concavity, then that means there is a maximum, right? It should make sense there, right? That's only if the Hessian, this capital D, is greater than zero. If it's less than zero, then we automatically, we don't have to do anything else. It gives us a saddle point. Um, and then this last one looks like there's a typo. Your notes should be fine, though. If that's equal to zero, then the test is inconclusive. Remember, inconclusive means it doesn't tell me anything. It doesn't tell me if there is one or if there isn't one. It actually literally tells me nothing. So we'll be using this test. Um, this thing is pretty easy to get memorized. After you do a few problems, you'll start getting it down. Okay, so let's let's give this an example. Uh, I'll give it a try. So it says to find uh, the steps here is to find the partials in set of equal to zero. I'm just going to do that in the space right here. Okay, the partial of f with respect to x is going to be 4x minus 2y minus 8. The partial with respect to y, if I go through that, I got 2y minus 2x minus 2. And we're going to set those equal to zero. And we have a system now. So the system I'm going to solve to make it look like something you guys are used to seeing, 4x minus 2y equals 8. And then the other one, I'm going to flip it over, negative 2x. Um, let's actually keep our x positive here. So I'm going to add that over. I got 2x minus 2y equals 2. Actually, we should have kept it where it was at. I'm going to erase it. Forgive me. Minus 2x plus 2y and then add 2 over. Those of you that are familiar with systems, you're going to understand why I did that. Okay, solve this, and they're called systems of equations, linear equations. And it won't always be linear, but solve this system. Okay, elimination, if you guys remember that, I can just add those two equations straight down. If I add those two equations straight down, I got 2x equals 10. The y's go away. I got a zero there, which tells me that x is equal to 5 for that. And then if I want to find y, I just plug that back in. I got 4 times 5 minus 2y equals 8. That gets me negative 2y minus 12. And then that means y is 6. So the critical point for this, and usually we're going to list these in a minute. We're going to have a bunch of them. So we have 5 comma 6 is a critical point. Usually, Sometimes these systems will spit out four critical points. Sometimes there'll be one, sometimes there'll be none. So there's my critical point. Now I'm going to check it with the Hesse. So I have my F. I'm going to need to find my mixed partials. So let's uh, find our derivative with respect to X. All right. Derivative of 2X squared is 4x. Derivative of negative 2xy is minus 2y. I think we did this already up above. We already have these. <clears throat> I need fxx though. That's going to be 4. Okay, I also have fy. We figured that out above 2. 2y minus 2x minus 2. two uh, fyy, the double partial there, is 2. And then we also need an fxy. Right, or one or the other because we're going to square it. Okay, I'm going to use fx at the top there and then do it with respect to y, I get a negative 2. So the Hessian at this point, remember it is going to be fxx times fyy minus fxy squared. So this is equal to 4 times 2 minus negative 2 squared. And just go down. I got 8 minus 4, so the Hessian is equal to 4. That doesn't really tell me anything except for it's greater than 0. So the Hessian of this point, 5, 6, doesn't even matter. Notice that it all just went away anyway. I would normally need to plug 5, 6 in, but because all of these are constant, right? This is constant, that's constant, that's constant. That means any point I plug in, 
the Hesse in this capital D is going to be equal to 4, which means it's greater than 0. So this tells me it's a max or min, relative max or min. Then we look at xx, and we get 4, so that's greater than 0. Okay, so I'm thinking that has positive concavity, so that is a minimum. So it's a relative minimum at 5, 6, and then I'm going to be lazy here, f5 of 6. That'd be my z component. All I got to do is plug it. I got to plug 5 and 6 into my function, and that will give me that. So there we go. We found that in on the surface at the point 5, 6, whatever the z is, f of 5, 6, there will be a relative minimum. So we'd have like a valley there at 5, 6.